you. Good morning, afternoon, evening, virtual coffee folks. Thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, I'm here to talk about how we've learned to love the CSV. CSV, what is that? If you haven't heard that acronym before, it's comma separated values or value if you forget to type the S like I did. So you've probably seen a file like this, first name, last name, some commas in there to separate stuff. Well, where did this come from and why in the age of JSON, XML, fancy schemas, gRPC, typed data, why do we still use commas? Where does that come from? And why is there still so much of it? If you go on Kaggle, search for CSV, you'll find literal gigabytes, terabytes of CSV data. Uh, why, why do we still use this old format? There's like some CS comma guild somewhere that says we must keep using these things. I don't know. That's what I wanted to find out. What I'm going to share a little bit with you and how to wrangle CSVs if you happen to encounter them. It's a good, good blog post I found while doing this talk and it kind of hit home because one of my first projects my freshman year of computer science was parsing a csv file with c code and even at the time not long after that picture was probably taken of that csv guild you just saw uh at the time i thought well this is a solved problem like computer science surely he'll never need to write a csv parser and i kid you not it feels like almost every week CSVs come up and we start thinking about, well, how are we going to parse that CSV? How are we going to ingest that data? What format is it? Well, it's probably going to be a CSV. So it sure feels like this format has followed me my entire career as well. Although my opinion on it has changed quite a bit. I don't think it's a scourge. I think it's actually kind of nice. So let's take a look why. Back in the early days of computing, when you had to punch a hole in a piece of paper in order to give instructions, uh, apparently commas became a thing there because instead of trying to type like uh, spaces or have equally set fields, you could just put a comma and then your parser would know, okay, that's I've hit the end of this field. Let me go on to the other one. So I believe like Fortran 77 and 1978 used commas or spaces for delimiters. And you can see if you look at this punch card, okay, it kind of maps to like a CSV file, tables, columns. I can see why they started doing that. Well, along came relational databases with their rows and columns. That surely maps well to a CSV, right? You know that, all right, I'm going to have 10 columns in this table. I'm going to have a series of commas to break up each field. I can have a new line at the end of each line or some other character to, to notate that there's an end. And then that gives me rows. And I know everything in that row or tuple is related. So if you've worked with relational databases, probably you've exported the data out as a CSV or dumped it or imported it as a CSV, maybe you wanted to play with a subset of a larger database and pulled it out as a CSV. In spreadsheets, these are meant for humans to read, right, and work with. And often a spreadsheet you'll export as a CSV back in the early days of spreadsheets when they didn't necessarily, the formats didn't always play nice. You know, you could export Excel, but the other person had to have Excel 97 or whatever it was. Uh, it sure was nice to be able to export a CSV and go, all right, well, your spreadsheet program will probably read that. So here's an example of a few spreadsheets. And these are nice for me to read. I, I'd rather look at the spreadsheet than try and stare at a binary database file or certainly a punch card. So there's some utility here, right? If I can export data as a CSV, you can look at it as a person. And that's kind of nice. You don't have to be a database expert or have even a command line installed if you have a spreadsheet program or Google Sheets loaded up. 
there's enough sort of wily formats that aren't human readable in the world. I right? hate UPC symbols. Wouldn't it be cool if they were more like the one on the right here? Like if it just said salami on the bottom of the UPC or peaches, <laughs> lettuce, that'd be, that'd be kind of cool. So let's give it up for the humans that have to read spreadsheets and work with them. And let's try and get our data in the CSV where they can do that. I'm gonna just walk through, it's barely a demo, but I wanna show a couple tools where if you do encounter CSVs or you need to work with them, uh, maybe it'll make your life a little easier. So to start with, you can hop over to Kaggle and look for some CSV data. If you wanna play around with it, just go on Kaggle, search CSV, you'll find all kinds of good stuff. If you happen to have a CSV on hand, you can import it into a Google Sheet, file import, pick your CSV. It'll ask you, what do you wanna do with this? Do you wanna do some data conversion? Ta-da, whoops, wrong button. There we go. You've got your CSV data in a nice format. Maybe you wanna work with it in code. Google Colab, like a online notebooks kind of thing. You can use Python and the pandas library to get some data out of a CSV. So here I've just imported this same file. It's historical emissions data from different countries around the world. And in just a couple lines of code, I can pull that in and dump out some of the data to kind of get a quick look at it. Like, oh, what's in this thing? How many columns in it? That can be nicer than maybe trying to cat the file or look at it on the command line. There's a pretty cool project called RBQL, which lets you kind of mix JavaScript and uh, other syntax into your queries. So for one, you can use that in uh, VS Code. They have like a extension for that. Here's the same CSV file. You can see it's got some pretty cool colors. You can come into their console and we can query this CSV data using not just SQL. You can see it's sort of a, a blend of languages here. So we're gonna select some data from that and it's gonna turn around and spit out like a subset of that CSV. So maybe before you get into writing code to parse a CSV or generate one, play around with it in something like RBQL to get a feel for it. It's another awesome project called DuckDB. DuckDB is like a SQL light plus plus uh check out the site read it i can't describe it well you'll get a better description from their documentation but the cool thing with duckdb is you can import data so i've imported this csv down here i can now describe this table of data that i've imported there we go and i can select data from it too all right, so again, if I wanna kind of play around and see what's in my data, I can do that through DuckDB. Uh, observable HQ, kind of the D3 data visualization, web-based notebook thing. Uh, they've got some great examples for like visualizing data. So you can see here, they've got some CSV oriented data and you know in a little bit of code you can play around with d3 and maybe visualize some of that again might make for nice exploration if you're dealing with csvs so relax if you see a csv don't yell at the comma guild uh, try out a couple of these projects check them out and see what you think hopefully it'll make your life a little easier and allow some humans to read your data thanks for having me this morning Nice to be here. I'll drop links and resources both in Slack and I'll update these slides here in a little bit. Find me at Virtual Andy on the web. And uh, thanks for having me. See y'all.